If you guys are as serious about homemade ice cream as we are, you're gonna wanna stick around. Are we ready to make ice cream? I think we're ready. Nice. <sighs> Haven't used that one in a while. So here's the deal. We've been making our own ice cream from scratch for the past three years, except until recently, we were living without modern power, more or less. We were on solar power, so we didn't have fancy appliances, so we were hand cranking our ice cream and it was worth it. It was one of those things that we picked up at a thrift store and I just knew it was gonna be going back to the thrift store within a month and we kept it for three years and we just recently retired it. If my memory serves me right, we've never had a problem getting rid of our ice cream. Am I right? Correct. Nice, but there's a few problems. And the obvious problems are time consumption and the quality of the ice cream. So the hand crank thing definitely works. We were able to get consistent quality ice cream out of this. The problem is who has time to sit there and crank it for 45 minutes? We do. Well, we did. We don't anymore. And we're kind of lazy now because we have grid power. The thing is we couldn't get the ice cream hard. So that's kind of a caveat. The hand crank ice cream maker will make kind of like a milkshake consistency but then you've got to freeze it to really get it to that hardened state where you can spoon it. Otherwise, you're just gonna drink it. So somewhat recently, we made the big leap to grid power. And we thought to ourselves, how could we make our life easier in really important ways? And we thought, an electric ice cream maker. The only thing is, when we went to buy one, we realized there's like 50 different makers out there. And we had the same problem you guys probably do. What the heck is the difference? Don't they all make ice cream or is one better than the other? So we did what any reasonable person would do. We bought the cheap one and the expensive one. So we decided to buy the $50 ice cream maker and the $250 ice cream maker. Before we take a closer look at these two, let's kind of talk about what you get when you buy an ice cream maker. They basically include a tub which holds ice they include a canister which holds the ice cream mixture, a dasher thing inside, and a motor. And they also include a manual. I will tell you up front that the manuals for both of these are not equal. Both of these manuals have basic operation instructions and safety instructions. That's not surprising. And they both have kind of basic general principles about how to make good ice cream, how to harden ice cream, and how to make different recipes, things that you can do to make different um, products like sorbet or regular milk-based ice cream. Where the White Mountain Manual differentiates itself is it has a lot of really profound information about the science of making amazing ice cream. And the, it really goes into detail explaining the thought behind the ice cream maker and how to maximize the tool. Before I read this book, which comes with the White Mountain Ice Cream Maker, I did not understand there could be so much thought put into making a really good homemade ice cream. So I feel like White Mountain could almost just sell this little book all by itself and people would buy it, but it's included for free. It's worth mentioning that White Mountain has been around forever. They're the age-old 
makers of ice cream makers. They made the original handmade ice cream machines. The thing is, they're no longer privately owned. They're now owned by Sunbeam and they're no longer made in America. They're made, I think, in China. So there's always questions about the quality when something like that happens. Along those lines, something that separates the White Mountain from almost all the other ice cream makers that you'll find is that you can actually get repair parts. They're designed to be serviced, which still, even though they're no longer American made, makes them unique. We've already made a lot of ice cream in these makers. We felt that it was fair to really understanding the differences about them. So let's go ahead and touch on what those differences are. Motors. The White Mountain motor is a metal base and it actually has metal gears. It is very sturdy and it actually just sets on the tub. So it's a very easy mechanism to, to attach, but it is quite heavy. This motor does not have an on off switch. So the only way to start and stop it is with the cord, but the motor is designed to be serviceable. So the motor itself and the gears inside can actually be replaced. On the Oster brand, it's actually a plastic motor base and it clips on with this kind of little bracket thing. It does, however, have an on off switch, which is kind of nice. It's odd that this is on the cheaper model. It does, however, look like this model is not designed to be repaired. It kind of looks like it's all one piece and I don't know if you're gonna be able to find parts for it. If there's one thing we've learned about ice cream making with an electric maker is you have to have a good motor. Early in the process, it's nothing. But as the ice cream starts to thicken, it really starts to work the motor hard. We want you to place your bets as to which one is quieter, which for most people running these in their homes, quietness is important. Go, Oster. White Mountain. That, wow. that was a surprise to us. We totally thought the White Mountain was gonna be not so loud and it's right up there with our generator. Holy cow, I mean, guys. maybe not that bad, but it's pretty loud. It's pretty freaking loud. When it's running, we're either not in the garage or we put it outside. Let me ask you a question. Do you want me to do it again? Right, that's how loud it is. But this one, not bad, guys. No, that, that one could go in your kitchen Look, probably. You yeah, that's, that's very manageable. Our clothes dryer that we don't have is louder than that. I mean, and that's as, that's as loud as it gets while you're making the ice cream. It doesn't really, even when it starts to get thicker, it's really not that much louder. But if you guessed that this one gets louder as the ice cream gets thicker, you'd be dead on. It actually gets louder. And I know you're thinking, how's that possible? Exactly what we said. Let's talk about the lids. So on the White Mountain, they use a cast metal lid. It looks like it's maybe made out of aluminum. And it's actually a really nice quality lid. It's really important because this is actually what engages with the motor. And this is actually what turns the canister with the ice cream in it. So if this were weak or fragile, as that ice cream starts to get really hard, I've seen these stripped out before. And this is a nice, sturdy square design. But there is one feature on the Sunbeam, or excuse me, on the Oster, that's a little better. It's clear. And I find that this is awesome because you don't have to take the motor off and take the lid off to see if the ice cream's hard or not. On the bad end, it is plastic, so we haven't had any issues with durability yet, but I wouldn't hold your breath because one too thick of a batch of ice cream and you could damage the lid but I think these are replaceable if you broke one. From what we've seen so far, it's become obvious that the metal lid, it's gonna last a lot longer. Dashers. The White Mountain Dasher is actually a very sophisticated product. It has a lot of different components, 
The main component is this cast, it seems like it's steel. It's not stainless steel because I'm seeing some rust on it, which makes sense because it's exposed to salt. It has a secondary component, which is this internal dasher, which is removable for cleaning. And this secondary dasher actually performs a super essential function inside this maker of creating kind of a whipping motion. It definitely makes a big difference in the outcome of the ice cream. On the edges are these little paddles. And these paddles are attached with just a couple of screws. And they're meant to move freely. They actually perform another really important function and that is scraping cleanly the inside of the canister. One thing we learned is that if ice were to build up on the inside of the canister, it actually insulates the ice cream mixture from the salt and water mixture that's outside. And ice cream takes a really long time to freeze. And so the White Mountain Dasher has these wooden paddles which do a fantastic job of cleaning the inside of the canister as it goes around and you'll see the effect that it has on its ability to freeze the ice cream later when we make some. I think if you could hold this, you would agree that this thing is pretty much indestructible. It's like solid metal, it's very heavy. And I kind of wonder if there might be some thinking behind that as far as it being metal and affecting the ability for the maker to freeze the ice cream. This one is very similar to our hand crank ice cream machine. It's like an exact replica. It's very similar. This is a two piece. It actually has like an aluminum shaft that is driven down into this plastic dasher. And it is plastic, so it's very cleanable and you're not gonna have to deal with rust. And this component being aluminum, it's never gonna rust. So that is an advantage to this cheaper dasher. And these small veins are designed to kind of churn the mixture. But I will say that this dasher does not scrape the inside of the drum nearly as well. And you do end up with some ice that builds up on the inside of the canister. These plastic dashers have been known to break. When the mixture gets too thick and the uh, canister is trying to turn, it can actually damage the, the dasher. But I think these are replaceable if one were to break. The White Mountain canister appears to be stainless steel. And when it comes to contact with the salty water mixture that we use to freeze this ice cream, that's a big deal. Uh, the ice cream maker that we have that's hand crank, there's clearly not stainless steel in there because it seems to have some corrosion that builds up on it. It doesn't affect the flavor of the ice cream, but it's also not very sightly. A couple of other features of the White Mountain canister is this little ear. This little ear is actually what the motor turns to turn the canister. If you're curious, in these ice cream makers, the dasher actually stays put and doesn't move. It is the canister that actually turns and it's uh, exposed to the ice and water mixture or ice and salt mixture that create the freezing effect. What's unique about this one also is that in the bottom, there's actually the driving mechanism for the White Mountain Dasher. It's very small, but it actually causes that dasher to turn in two completely different uh, directions. And the ice cream that this machine makes is far more whipped than the Oster version. As these machines turn, this canister turns, it's sitting on a small uh, pointed piece of metal in the bottom of the tub. And this one appears to be metal, as is the small pointed piece in the bottom of the tub. So this, as far as durability goes, it's probably gonna last forever. The Oster tub appears to be made out of aluminum or maybe even a galvanized metal. I would be concerned over time that this may start to rust. If it's aluminum, it probably won't. As I mentioned on the White Mountain, they had the little ear inside that actually drives the, the canister during mixing. This one is just bent. It looks like there's a machine that kind of crimps this and that's what causes this machine to turn. I would be concerned that if this were to get bent, 
either from heavy mixture or dropped or something like that, it might affect its ability to do its job. The worst thing you can have is when the lid just spins and the canister stays put. This one has just a bent dimple on the bottom that actually rides on a conical plastic uh, piece in the bottom of the tub. I don't think that's gonna wear out, but the small plastic piece in the bottom of the tub, that might wear out if you use it a lot. The Oster does give you a fill mark even though it's a four quart maker, they show inside that you should only put about three quarts of mixture in there so that it doesn't overflow because ice cream expands as it freezes. Jumping back to the White Mountain, I think it's worth mentioning that this is a six quart maker and the Oster is a four quart maker. Even though the canisters are basically the same diameter, as you'll see, there's something functionally different about the White Mountain that freezes much faster. And I'm not sure if it's the metal or the thickness or something like that, but there's definitely a difference between these two, even though physically they're very similar. This could totally be the fact that this is a six quart maker. It actually has a much larger surface area that's exposed to the ice and salt mixture. And that may actually be why a larger ice cream maker actually freezes faster. And finally, tubs. So the White Mountain Tub is made out of wood. I'm not, I can't remember if it's a really unique wood or not, but the joinery on it is actually really nice. It's a good looking kind of classic, contemporary, modern tub. Like it's gonna fit no matter where you are. Plus it looks really cool. One feature I do like about this tub is this handle. It makes emptying the ice and water mixture much easier than having to carry it with two hands. But I will say that the handle with the motor on it is not good to move. The motor doesn't really sit tightly. It doesn't have a great way of holding it down. Kind of just gravity held. So if you were to pick the tub up by the handle with the motor on it, you're gonna have that moment where you're like, ah! the motor's gonna fall off. And given that it's metal and top heavy, it's definitely gonna fall on the ground and probably get damaged. They both have a weep hole in the side, and this is to allow excess water to drain out so that the water mixture doesn't get into the canister while it's freezing. So this one has a small weep hole, um, pretty high up, obviously. I noticed when we first started using this maker how kind of just wobbly this motor is. It certainly works just fine, but it's, I don't know, for, for such an expensive product, uh, I, don't, I mean, you don't have to do anything really to lift it off, but the problem is you don't have to do anything for it to fall off either. And I don't know, that whole thing just kind of makes me nervous, especially given the price of this ice cream maker. As far as the Oster tub, it definitely has kind of just a cheaper overall look to it. The wood isn't nearly as nice. And it looks like they're actually using a lot of glue to hold this tub together. Although there is some joinery there. So that's gonna uh, help. But I can tell you that these bands that are here are purely for looks. Whereas on the White Mountain, they have stainless steel loops around the bin and it's like a wine barrel. Those loops are not for looks. They're physically holding that barrel tight. Like our hot tub. Right, they're very much like a cedar hot tub or a wine barrel that has steel bands. These are just adorable and are doing absolutely nothing. So there's a chance that if you were to drop this tub or that just from use, heavy use, this tub may end up failing on you. Another feature that I don't really love is these two handles. They're kind of small and you have to two hand the bucket. It'd be nice if there was just one handle and you could pick it up and carry it away. But I will say that Oster's method of securing the motor is definitely a little more refreshing. It simply clamps down and it's held very securely. That's not gonna fall off. If it gets tipped over by the dog at a barbecue, it's not going anywhere. What do you think? Should we make some ice cream? I'm ready. Alyssa at dinner was like, hey, did you get enough dinner? I'm like, yeah because we're making ice cream later and I'm totally gonna eat a bunch. Exactly. <laughs> it's worth noting that a lot of homemade ice cream has the problem of getting really icy, almost like you froze water. It's just not fun to eat. It doesn't have that like 
store-bought ice cream texture and consistency. So the secret we found is cream. And we just so happened to get our milk from a local farmer with some Jersey cows. And you can see this is actually not a lot of cream. It kind of depends on probably multiple factors, how much cream a cow is producing in their milk. But from this farmer, we've gotten milk with almost 50% cream. But it's called ice cream, not iced milk. So we simply substitute with additional cream. So we also pick this up and this is just all cream. If this isn't available, then we simply do store-bought cream. And to us, that really helps cut down on the iciness factor. And no matter what recipe you make, unless it's fruity, this is the secret ingredient. So what crazy ice cream concoctions are we making this time? Well, we've been making fruit ice cream, mostly because we've had a lot of fresh fruit throughout the summer. Yeah. But I have a hankering for mint chocolate chip. Oof. So that's what we're putting in this baby here. Nice. And in this one, we're having huckleberry ice cream. This is part of our summer harvest that we canned up and we found that simply dumping half pint to a pint of this in our ice cream works really well. We actually picked all that fruit locally and canned it to preserve it. But the beautiful thing about jam we've learned is it makes amazing ice cream. We don't really eat a lot of jam, but we eat a bit of ice cream. So we've been using it that way. We don't have a specific recipe to share, but all I can say is it's worth experimenting because sometimes you don't have everything a recipe calls for, but we work really hard to make the best ice cream we can with the fewest number of ingredients possible. And we can tell you, don't worry if you make a bad batch of ice cream, life goes on, It'll get eaten, you'll get better, we've all done it. One tip about jam is you can reduce your sugar by whatever's in the jam. Only because jam is sugar. Because jam is sugar. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't, it'll be over sweet, which actually is a problem and it can make ice cream icky poo. good ice cream chef samples their ice cream before they <laughs> commit to it. Also doesn't want to wait for it to freeze. <laughs> wow. Oh. Try. Okay, I'll oh try God, a little let bit. Let me finish the tablespoon. Oh. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> it's mint milk. It's mint that milk. That satisfies the craving. You don't even want the chocolate, huh? Jesse also discovered if we put the ice cream makers in bigger pots, then it doesn't make a mess all over your garage or counter or whatever. Especially as the, the salty water comes out of that little wheat pole. Yeah, it can get really messy. There's room, it'll go. Maybe we should take some out. Oh, yeah.
Let's see where they're at. The big comparison? Let's see. So this one we just put the chocolate in. Yep. Minutes ago. Holy wow. I'd say that one's fish. done. Wow. Mm, get in my belly. And this one's gonna look probably a little on the runny. Oh. What in the world? It's like it's frozen. Yeah, it's not even what churning, the heck? is it? No, because there's all this liquid. That's a new one. Oof. 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 Oh, that's not what you want to see when you open the ice cream maker. 25 minutes, guys. 25, and I still see runny stuff. Well, I don't even know that it's mixing, right? It better be mixing. Well, yeah, probably. So, maybe we dish this one out and we let this one go a little longer to mix it up. What do you think? Uh, it's gotta go longer. It's not even frozen yet. Yep, put the lid back on. Yep. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to get it out of here. Why is the lid coming through? My goodness. Ooh, that <laughs> looks so good. It does. Oh my I, gosh. I think it's the right amount of chocolate. You should test it Probably. real quick. Okay. Oh. Wow. That's just as good as store bought. Oh, it's better. What are you talking about? This is made with real ice cream or real wow. cream. That's incredible. That was 25 minutes, guys. And we even stopped this one to add the chocolate. I think as we turn these on, it clicked for me why this one freezes faster. I'm still not 100% sure, but did you see how fast this thing turns compared to the other one? The other one turns the same speed no matter what. Although it probably does actually slow down a little bit as it approaches full frozen state. This one was going like crazy and then as it starts getting stiffer and stiffer, it starts going slower and slower. So it's not as stiff as it looked, but it's still pretty good. I mean, it's not gonna hold like a scoop. That's not what you're trying to achieve in an ice cream freezer, by the way. You want it to be stiff, but not runny. And this freezer definitely gets the ice cream stiffer. We probably could have let this go another two or three minutes. But we're hungry. But we want some. One for me. Two for me. One for me. How many pints will this produce? That's what I was gonna ask you. 11. Really? Yep, so this we filled three quarters full. It whipped up enough that you actually dipped out about half a pint to add chocolate. Yeah, that's about fair. Yeah. And we added about two and a half cups of chocolate or so. And it was actually overflowing when we stopped it. You'll probably notice that it actually gets stiffer the closer to the bottom that you get. Mm, okay. And it'll get stiffer and stiffer. Eventually, we'll have to take the paddle out, and that way you can get access to all of it. Yep. The tragedy is that a lot of the cream actually freezes to the paddle, and uh, somebody's going to have to lick that off there. wait for the other one apparently all Let's take its sweet little time we have day. nothing to do tonight so so for the record i would say that this ice cream is on par with some of the most expensive ice cream in the store which is about six dollars a pint so right here we have 72 dollars worth ice of ice cream, cream wow. if you bought it at retail price and i think it cost us probably under 10 and 25 minutes of our time it's pretty good i'll take it so I guess wrapping this up, if you're in the market for an ice cream maker, which one's better? And I don't think there is a better, I think it just depends on what you're using it for. We were thinking if you want something that's really quiet to run in your home, you're okay with it not freezing quickly or being a great consistency right out of the maker and you're okay with freezing it, the cheaper ice cream maker will probably do. But if you do want something that whips up in a jiffy, and again, is just overall higher quality, it's serviceable, it's something that'll be in the family for a long time, maybe go with the white mountain. And let's not rule out the hand crank. If you have kids that you feel aren't really appreciative for the ice cream that makes it into their house, definitely get the hand crank. And no cranky, no eaty. Off she goes to the deep freezer. Holy cow, guys. It may actually happen today. 
Where does ice cream freezes? <laughs> oh, that's it. That's the one. It says go until the motor stops. Eh, it's pretty close to stopped. It's good enough. That's oh, pretty yeah. stiff that looks, for this mixer. That looks mixer. better. That looks better. That's pretty. That's stiff. pretty good. Yep. Oh wow. That's pretty stiff for this mixer. That's pretty good. That's pretty they, dang they, good. They're almost similar. I'd say they're equal, except for this took over an hour, and the other one took 25 minutes. That's looking good. That's pretty good. I've met my ice cream quota, so. Oh, I guess I'll have to eat that. Now you know, guys. Enjoy whatever ice cream you decide to make. Oh, I don't think anybody will miss this one.